Joining me now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence, a man that's going to be looking for his third win in a row coming up next Friday night, Bellator 175, as he takes on Sergey Karatanov. It is Chase Gormley. Chase, how's it going? What's up, buddy? Good talking to you. Great talking to you. I was uh, when I, I knew I was going to be talking to you. You know, I pull up your, your profile. I, I have to think that you have to be one of the quietest guys that is has won seven of his <laughs> last eight fights. Is part of that because yeah. maybe people when, when they think of the upper echelon of the Bellator heavyweight division, you're just a name that just doesn't get brought up. Uh, you know, I think it's my style. You know, I, I'm more of an output guy, and I don't go out there and, and crush dudes in the first round. And uh, I think in heavyweights, you know, you got to have a couple, a couple of those uh, to kind of get noticed. I think so. I've kind of made those adjustments in the room because I really got to start finishing guys if I want to get a, a chance for that title shot. So I've made those adjustments, and I think that's probably why I'm not as big of a name as I should be. But I'm working every day to make sure that I can get to, get to that point. You know. When you go back and you look at uh, your last two wins, they're both by split decisions. Is it performances? I mean, obviously you're happy because you you ultimately got the win, but are you are you thrilled with your performances in those fights? No, not at all. Uh, like I, I've told a lot of guys I've talked to so far, as I was hurt, you know, the Belcham fight I had a pinched nerve in my neck, uh, and it went all the way down my left arm. And then my last fight with Bobby Branch, my hand was broken about two weeks before the fight. So, but. Uh, like I said, when I sign that contract and, and show up for the fight, I'll fight. You know, unless the doctor says no, I'm 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 coming in no matter what. You know, it is it, I mean, obviously, you know, to get paid in the sport, you, you got to fight. Is that part of the thought process of? Yeah, I, I've got to battle through this because ultimately, I've got to you know, I've got to you know, pay the bills and feed the family. Yeah, you know, and, and I'm not in a position right now where I can turn down fights because it's really detrimental to uh you know paying bills and making sure the family's okay so i that had a lot to do with me taking the fights too but it's also just my mentality as a wrestler you know unless you know my body's totally you know unable to do it i'm gonna do it yeah and, and taking on sergey karatanov here obviously uh you know, sergey you know no disrespect to, to bobby or, or, or joey but he is the biggest name uh or dan charles that you have fought uh, in bellator but he is in this fight you know following that yeah. that knockout loss in 16 seconds I know there's nothing you can yeah. really gain out of going back and, and watching 16 seconds of a fight, um, but it, because of the fact that he's had so many fights here, you're kind of like, I, I know the guy that's going to show up. There's there's not going to re- really be many new wrinkles he's going to offer. Yeah, well, I mean, I got an idea of what he's going to do, you know, and I think uh, he's going to come out re-energized for this fight because, you know, he's an older guy. He's He's not a young kid that, that's kind of discouraged from a knockout win. He's like, ah, oh, it happened. You know, he's going to he's gonna make some adjustments to the room and come back stronger. So I definitely know that's going to happen, but I think he's come back a little too soon. I think uh, he's probably still a little bit rocked. And uh, it's definitely in my in my advantage to go out there and push the pace and try to knock him out in that first minute, first two minutes. And if not, then I'm prepared to go the distance. You know, I have two different game plans, and uh, just got to make the adjustments on the fly if I have to, you know? When you see someone get knocked out like that, in that matter, and, yeah. and as quickly, whether you know it's a guy that you're in the training room with, or, or maybe you you've run across him at some point, what what do you think is the amount of time that a fighter should sit on the sidelines? I think it takes about seven to eight months because I've been knocked out. Like I said, I've been knocked out personally, and uh, you know, it, it for me, my brain didn't really get back to normal until about that seven eight month mark. You know. So I just think, like, when you get hit in the room, the littlest punches kind of, you know, rock you. So I, I definitely don't think he took enough time off. But like I said, everybody's different, though. He might heal really fast. So well, I guess when we go out there, we'll see, you know. <laughs> in, in terms of preparations for this fight, any uh, any minor or drastic changes in your training camp? Yeah, I think uh, my last few fights I was working on volume. Just go out there and throw, 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 throw. Uh, not a lot of power behind it. More just, uh, you know, punches and bunches i think this fight i'm i've been working on power you know kind of working on uh, on getting that kind of cardio down in the room because if you don't train it you can't do it in fight not effectively anyways so i really been hitting the heavy bag you know uh going after people when we're sparring instead of sitting back on my jab and let them come to me and counter punch like they usually do i've been really being more offensive and more aggressive and i think uh you know that's a big difference in this fight so hopefully it, you know it shows when i go out there but we'll see you know do you all feel in, in you know your run here of, of recent that maybe at times in fights you weren't as aggressive as you should have been? 
Absolutely not. You know, I think that, that kind of like, you know, with Joey and, uh, and Bobby, if I just would have pushed the pace, I think it would have been much different fights. I just, you know, I, I let them stay in the fight and made it into a boring fight, sat by my jab and my low kick. And, you know, if I want to become the heavyweight champion, I can't be doing that. So I just had to make those adjustments. I mean, those things are good if I need to rest for a second, kind of regroup. But I really got to really start pushing the offense. So this, this training camp has really been focused on being the aggressor, going out there and getting things done and stop waiting for them to come to me, you know. When Bellator offers you this fight against Sergey, were you, were you at all surprised? No, I mean, I, I mean, they've offered to me before, but I know Sergey turned it down a few times. So I always thought it was going to happen a lot sooner. When he finally gave it to me this time, I knew he wasn't going to turn it down. So I'm really excited, you know, because I've always thought, you know, he's a he's a guy that if I can beat, no one really can deny me a shot at that belt, you know, or at least uh, I'll be in the mix for it. Right now, you know, I still got a lot. To do, so he's definitely a guy that's going to get me past that that hump, you know. Why do you think he turned down fights with you in the past, but accepted it this time? Oh, probably my last performance. You know, that performance with Bobby was horrible, and uh, he probably saw that and goes, "Oh, that's a guy I can beat," you know. But that wasn't that wasn't me, man. That I was I was hurt, you know. I was I was fighting like a coward, and this fight, I'm definitely not going to be fighting like that. And it's like, if I do go down, it's going to go down on my shield and it's going to be a fight, you know, he's not going to enjoy, you know. I think there was a, a pop or sentiment uh, uh, among MMA Twitter when this fight was announced that you were basically being brought in to lose. What would you say to those people that basically feel that you're just being brought in to lose here? I mean, they don't, they don't know me. You know, they don't know how hard I work. <laughs> I work extremely hard. And uh, I'm a hard guy to beat when I when I put my mind to it. So, you know, the fans say what they want to say. They they pay their money and they watch the show. They can say whatever they want to say, but they don't know me. And when I go out there, I go out there to win. You know what I mean? I'm not the sacrificial lamb for anybody. And whoever fights me is going to find that out, you know? Is there something you'd want fans to know about you that maybe they just don't know about you to this point? I mean, not really. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not a cocky guy. I'm not a, I'm not a guy that... that you know, talks big game. I just like to go out there and fight. I fight for me. I don't fight for fame or money. I've been poor all my life, you know, and that and that's not important to me. My What's important to me is go out there and, you know, it's just a challenge for me. Every time I go out there and fight, it just kind of just uh, proves myself where I'm at, you know, and that's the most important thing to me. If the fans like me, that's great. You know, if they don't, you know, that's their opinion, you know. I know there's a difference between being confident and cocky, and, and obviously stepping to a cage, you have to be yeah. confident in your abilities to go in there because you know another guy's trying, trying to take your head off. What is the difference between, for you at least, of being a confident fighter as opposed to being a cocky fighter? Well, I think nowadays, you know, with the McGregor's and everything like that, it's hard because you know he, you know, he's definitely cocky, but you know, you saw what it did for him, you know, but it, it, it's not my style. And I try to always just be honest, you know, I try to be myself and I try to put on a show for nobody. And I think, uh, that's kind of where I'm at. You know, I treat my opponents with respect when we meet, when we, when we shake hands for the, for the face off and everything like that, I never, I'm never disrespectful. And I think that's kind of the difference, you know, guys go out there and talk smack, but it's a tough game, man. You know, some people, that's how they have to do that to get their mind ready. You know, I don't have to do, I've been wrestling since I was four years old. So competing is competing. You know, <laughs> it's as easy as going to the park and playing basketball, you know? And, and of course, uh, one year away will be a decade for you professionally fighting in MMA. And one of the things I always like to ask guys, what is the best night in the sport for you to this point? Best night in the sport for me. Uh, it was probably my win over Joey. It was my first win in a big organization. I kind of got that, that monkey off my back. Like it, it wasn't a great performance, but I, you know, I went up there and fought tough. So I think that was probably one of my biggest uh, accomplishments so far in my career. What's the most memorable night? Is is it Joey as well? Yeah, probably that, or when winning the Titan FC belt against uh, John Madsen. So that was a nice long. Five five minute round fight. <laughs> we were both bloody, and it was it was a good time, you know. Is is it one of those fights uh, after having a twenty five minute war? Do like do you have the the shorts from that night like hanging up at, at your home or in the gym or something along those lines? I still have them. I still wear them to practice and stuff. I, I've never been really like a uh, memento guy. I don't really like, keep stuff, you know. I mean, I'm not a hoarder or nothing like that. So, yeah, when a fight's done, it's done for me. You know, I just move on to the next one.
You know, I try, I try not to live in the past, whether it was good or bad performances. I always try to move forward, you know. And, of course, you've got your fight coming here next Friday night, Bellator 175. So you're going to be able to see Chase take on Sergey Karatanov live on Spike Course headline by Quentin Rampage Jackson taking on King Mo Lowell. Chase, as always, I appreciate the time, and good luck next week. No problem. Thank you, sir.